Yeah, that's, that's what I'm actually going to Self-confidence is important. There you go. <laughs> um, it's good to tell our audience that, Rob. So, oh. uh, welcome to Microcasters. You this time, Rob. <laughs> Thanks for taking my time. what I get for being on here. <laughs> I gave you a warning, too. I was like, hey, we're, we're going live. It's going to be like 30 seconds. So. Anyway. I don't have a stopwatch. Hmm. So, yeah, uh, welcome to Microcasters. It's been a couple weeks, so we decided, hey, you know, we should probably have a show or something. First show of the decade. Yeah, Happy New Year. We're back. Yeah, we'll have tea. Also, I don't know what the date actually was, but, like, really officially now, it's Happy Anniversary, Microcasters. Yay. Woo. Oh, yeah. Congratulations, guys. One year of nonsense. Mm Mm-hmm. Congrats to us. So, <laughs> the trio of best. terror lives on. So, like, yeah, I had to go back to see when we actually started. Like, I think there was, like, a couple of, like, awkward episodes with, like, Anna and I where it's, like, we are just her and I just broadcasting the Facebook. I think I it's joined up there. between Christmas and New Year's last year, or I guess 2018. I think we did like a couple shows and then we're like, okay, well, I guess we'll do this weekly. So, yeah. So now, now listen to the enthusiasm and everything. So I'm excited about it. Yeah, we do. It's been a fun year. And yeah, yeah. Now we're actually talking. <laughs> and sometimes we talk about decent figures. Even it's really neat. Yeah. So uh, normally we, you know, talk about Hasbro stuff, but today we're actually gonna going to talk about the new Masterpiece figure. So we've got uh, MP Hound, and we have a special guest this week, Rob, because Christian and I don't actually have Hound, so I did we at least get see to them mess at least. with him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, got, got to mess with him. Well, he's I great. Made kind of luxury. Hmm. You made it about a yeah. third of the way through the transformation, I think. I'd give you about a third. I, I was close to half, I think. You got to Not, the feet and ran away. I got halfway through the feet, and I was like, "Three you know what? I think it's we." I ran out of time, you know. And it's one of those things too, where I was like giving Anna a hard time because I think that uh, didn't you say that it took you like an hour and a half to transform her like the first time? Almost right? hour and, and fifteen so, minutes initially. And so I was like, I was like, oh, that's like you know whatever. Like it won't take me that long, and then. Darned if, like, I, I don't know how long I worked. I, I mean, I transformed a couple other figures first, but it was... You put about 30 to 40 minutes in a hound. Yeah, so... That's way too long to transform one toy. There, there's my review. Done. Well, he's awesome. I agree with that. End of, end of show. And, and We're Rob, done. of course, like, the masterpiece apologist, who's like, every masterpiece <laughs> is incredible. <laughs> they all this do incredible things. Me, this only took me three minutes, and I was eating a sandwich in one hand, and running a, running a show with the other hand, driving a car. Oh. He's three minutes. Show me, that, show me that jabber, Rob. Yeah. Fuck oh. <laughs> <laughs> that toy. I hate it so much. I hate it so much. It's like, I hate that toy so much that if someone ever does do another blur, which and nobody's announcement, so I don't think it's happening, but if they did, like, I would be tempted to, like, just to drop kick that thing instead of sell it to get my money back out of it. You know, and I'm really frugal when it comes to my toy lobby, my toy budget. Just get but this one. It not is gonna... not great at all. Yeah, that looks terrible. <laughs> I wish Unique Toys buzzing had the right aesthetic because unique toys has and DX nine both have like really great transformation schemes. They are all really fun toys, but the aesthetic is just way off. I don't have a place for it. Yeah. Hound. You guys have tonight is hound. Hound is awesome. I don't have it. So it's gotta be the Rob and Anna show. That's right. So here's what its box looks like. I have it with me. All of them have this, Dome sticker right on the middle. The good news is that you can pull it off. It, it doesn't... I mean, Masterpiece boxes suck anyways, because they're just a black box with product fi- feature, uh, pictures. But yeah, they come off cleanly. Um, they don't... They don't, like, you know, rip your box up or anything. Again, not that these boxes are good. 
Yeah. Ooh. I appreciate the masterpiece boxes. They're all a I should like size. the boxes too. You just like stack them all up. They're very the clean. Room. I like that look. So the I'm reason a- I'm pulling this up because this is how you're going to see Hound's alt mode tonight because neither of us have him in alt mode. So you're going to see it by me yeah, holding up this box. I thought you guys were going to transform him live on air. It's our special microcasters that last an hour and a half. <laughs> it wouldn't take that long. Um, to relay. Oh, let's right. set go. confidence. I, I can't do it job. on camera while I'm talking and whatnot. Y'all, y'all have seen <laughs> how I perform under pressure. Then, it's not good. And, and then drop it. And... <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. But the yeah. most complicated thing I would transform on air is like a target master. That's like about as far as I'm going to go. <laughs> I mean, I could transform like, I just got this guy in. I could transform this on air. He's what what is that for our audio listeners? Oh, it's our Siege Mixmaster. Uh, yeah, like he's studio series. Cool. Yeah, he's not too bad. Um, I really like the Siege. original. You said Siege. Sorry, Studio you Series Mixmaster. <sighs> Listen to what I mean, not what I say. Here, uh, Randall. Yeah, live transformation for you. <laughs> um, we can also talk about, I got some Mortal Kombat figures in. I got Sector. That's that's tomorrow on your show. Yeah, I was gonna yeah, say the crap out of our show. I, I like how Rob's like, I don't want to do Hound on uh, on my show or whatever, and then you sit there and talk about all the stuff you bought this week. There you go, live transformation, Randall, as requested. Wow. <laughs> yes. Anything for our fans. Okay. Okay, so I'm so looking Hound. at looking at Anna's Hound because it's the one that's on <laughs> camera. Thank that makes Rob. sense. And it looks. I'm not gonna like fucking hold sh- this for an hour. Do it. It looks like it looks like he's walked out of the show, which is fantastic to a point to me. I don't like that hyper cartoon look for toys that transform. I love it. So that's why I'm out of MP in general. If anyone hasn't, yeah. anyone hasn't heard me say that before. But you guys have him. Is he good? Is he worth getting? Is he worth the price? I don't remember what the price price was. I think it was one twenty from Amazon thoughts? Japan. Um, right. I've heard a lot of people say this is kind of a return to form. <laughs> And while I think Prime was amazing, like that was my number one figure of the year, um, Bumblebee was obviously a step back, you know, objectively. Um, but him, I mean, he he cleans up all the way around. I mean, there's it's pretty clean. I mean, it's super clean, um, and the transformation is intuitive. I mean, it's it's lengthy like any modern masterpiece figure, but like one of the most kick-ass things are the feet. He, so you know how Hound has generally has a, accessories. No one's talking to you, Lucas. No one's talking to you. Um, you know how he has like the big uh, cannon thing that goes in the back seat, the big missile launcher, yes. and he has use of the spare tire and the gas can. You can leave all those accessories attached while you transform it, in which fact, is they make the feet more solid. It's ridiculous. That is so cool. Like they didn't need to do that, and you can you can unplug them if you want, but not that you'll be able to see it with our crappy webcams but like there's a gun you see a little bit of the gray in there that's the missile launcher he's folded up in there and happy and there's a spare tire folded up in there um that's pretty crazy yeah you know it's just the robot kibble that's on or the car kibble that's on here is what you would expect to be on here from the show that's actually accurate to his animation model in the back but um and i feel like it's very much a return to form so I was trying to show my husband how clean he was. I was like, look, there's like no kibble on this one. It's really cool. And the first thing he was like, he was like, but there's a steering wheel hanging out his back. It was just funny that that was like the first thing his eyes found was the steering wheel. Because it is there. I mean, the steering, steering wheel is back there. And you know what else it's is not back egregious. here? Is this little hook here. <clears throat> and you're like, why is there a little hook here? Because... His accessories, which also come, you can tab them all in the canopy, which is awesome, includes a little key that he has Ravage held in. And so you can put that on his hip and carry it around. So little fun tweaks like that that they didn't have to do, no one's ever done before, but it's really cool that they they went that extra effort to do it. So I consider myself an expert in Transformers, but I could have missed something. Is the canopy from something? I don't know that that's from the show, but I haven't watched G1 in a long time. I thought there was like one episode with the canopy. Peter would probably know. 
Let us know more say, than me. He's I heard guy. that it showed up one time, but yeah, I'm not sure was about like it. One shot, one show kind of thing. <clears throat> I'm wondering if that was more of a licensor agreement okay. thing, where they, if they're going to make the Jeep, they have to make the canopy. I don't know. That's a guess. Sure. Just to keep us. Just to keep us kind of on track a little bit, not that we really had a track, um, I want to first talk about the alt mode very briefly. Now, I've heard people online talk about how good the alt mode is. I honestly only saw mine in the alt mode out of the box. I haven't put them back in it. But mine was not flush out of the box. Like, it was not a flush Jeep. It was a Jeep with problems. Like, the front end was a little lopsided. The sides didn't clip together correctly. And I am going to use the show to confirm whether or not mine actually has QC issues and Rob's is in better shape because I kind of think that's what happened with mine. But overall, I like the way the Jeep looks, except that it clearly has a robot hanging off the bottom of it. And I feel like from several views of the Jeep, you can really see that. And that kind of bummed me out a little bit. I know those faces. Those are strong faces, Rob, but... <laughs> I, I was, I was trying to remember, it's, I don't, you know, some people talk about visible robot syndrome or visible head syndrome, unless it's like from the top of the vehicle or the sides of the vehicle, I'm kind of like, whatever, like prime Megatron. I felt that was a bad one because his little head's right there in the middle of his spaceship mode kind of popped out and you like put a flap over his face or something. Right. It's you know, the show. <laughs> it's because the sh- they made them together. <laughs> um, I don't think that's how they wanted that toy. It's just how it ended up, you know. But um, I'm trying to remember what it looked like in Jeep mode, and I can't remember, or at least to that. Yeah, I just, you know, I looked at it from, if you look at the box, all the views of the Jeep are kind of from like a three-quarters perspective. None of them are from the side or from the front. From the side and from the front, you can see a little bit of his robot mode. It's not the most egregious thing in the world, but for some reason it really bugged me just because I think masterpiece figures that I've owned recently, including this mess, have actually, I hold up Bumblebee, um, have actually had clean alt modes. Even though he is a pain and an act of torture to get into his alt mode, it is clean. Um, Oh, I'm holding a gun towards the camera. That feels bad. Put that down, Bumblebee. You're not like that. Like, I wish so, I had him in, in Jeep mode so we could look at it. I wish we could too, but that's okay. Like that's, I think that I am going to have a unpopular opinion when it comes to Hound. I honestly think I am, and that's okay because I've heard a lot of people praising the transformation and talking about how incredible and creative and intuitive. And the only word I could use to describe it by the time I was done was long. <laughs> it was not painful. I was only scared a few times in the feet when I was transforming it that I was going to break it. Um, <clears throat> but it just took a long time for me. There's one part of the transformation I don't like. Um, but again, I've only transformed it once uh, into robot mode. And that is the arms, like untabbing like the little wheels covers on the front. When you got to untab them to get them to move out of the way so you can get the arms out and stuff. I didn't like that part. The rest of it I loved. Um, and like, and even then, I knew that's what it needed to do, but you got to move pieces past each other. You know, and we see that a lot in, in our toys where it's like you got to kind of flex a little bit to get something around something. Um, I didn't like that part of it. Um, but that was it. The rest of it I enjoyed, but, you know. One more thought about the cheat mode that I want to ask you. Could your Jeep roll? Could the wheels actually roll when you took it out of the box? Because mine could not. Yes. Because I, I had it on my desk over here at the time. Okay. My and front wheels were not transformed in a way that they could roll at all. And I couldn't fix it just in my hands. Like, I think I would have to start it over to fix whatever was wrong with it. Hmm. Well, I think, so, Anna, you were saying that you were worried that yours is slightly warped, I guess, right? I'm worried that my entire figure is warped. Yeah, which is a bummer. But. So when you were saying QC issues, I was expecting you to bring up paint issues because I know Pake for Life's had some like minor paint blemishes, and I've and had that on has, some of my master pays. It has a blemish on each knee, nice big scratches. 
that came out of the box. Those are not parts that are in the transformation. It was just when I flipped the legs out, I was the first thing staring at me was that nice sucks. gray scratches on the green. And I was like, oh, that's sad. And there's also paint scraping um, under the hip skirts. Um, but it's not egregious or anything. Like, it's no worse than expected. Um, you know, there's just a couple little scratches on the side there. Like, that one didn't bother me because I, I know these legs are going to get scratched over time just because they're paint legs. <laughs> However, if you look at the feet on mine, um, you'll notice that the the sides of the feet don't actually fit flush. And it's not right. I think he is hound warped. Like I'm looking at mine. Like, mine... My left foot isn't, like, 100% against it, but it's nothing like that. You know, I mean, like, there's a minor gap there, but that's kind of typical transformer part plastic gap. You know what I mean? Um, like, unless it, like, tabs in, that is way larger. I mean, since you got oh, both ears are that way, I wonder if you're missing, like, a double hinge somewhere. I don't Maybe. I am. I try. I read it a couple of times, and I okay. think it just won't fit flush. The reason I think my figure might have warping issues is actually, I'm going to mute myself because I'm going to play with the box real quick. It's going to be Maybe right now while she's muted is when she normally would robot. And so we can go ahead and get that out of the way. <laughs> no, I don't think so. No such luck. Beep, boop, 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 boop. And yes, I actually, just for, uh, was it Ron? Yeah, or Randall. Just for Randall, I am seeing if I can get it into Jeep mode, or at least see how far oh, I get it. You. You know? Do you have you. your canopy on hand? Do I have my what on hand? Canopy. Yes. Canopy. yes. The getting the canopy camera, on please. was a pain in the ass. Like, it doesn't really snap on. It's just weird. It's awkward to get it on there. I can't tell, but I think mine is more warped than yours. See, like mine this, is significantly going in on the sides. Mine is too. And that made it it was okay. Maybe mine it, is. That's how it's designed. Warped. Because it doesn't actually like peg or tab in necessarily. It right. just kind of sits <laughs> in place. I mean, once you get it on there correctly, it's snug and it's happy. It, you mine know, was but it snug. doesn't. But it doesn't like. It doesn't tab in the way you would think a canopy would tab in. Mine ended up only actually. <clears throat> mine actually ended up only really fitting correctly from three or four angles. Like, there's an angle you could see where it was actually fitting lopsided, which was a bit of a bummer. But, like I said, I think my figure had some issues. Enough yeah, issues I mean, I've heard some considering people, going through a return process. I, I, I know there's been um, a number of breakages. And I know, like, every time there's a new figure that comes out, like, somebody breaks it, right? I mean, if however many people get it, then, then they are. But, like, I feel like for Masterpiece in general, it seems like I've seen more breakages with this figure than I have the um, some of the other ones. And again, like it could just be people that are ham-fisted or whatever. I mean, there are definitely there's a couple different points that are a little bit scary, like with the feet and like with the... Um, What's scary parts. on the feet? Like, I don't... I didn't there's have any issues. Couple, there's just a little, like a couple little hinges and stuff like that if you handle it wrong. Like... I, I think the main point that's been breaking, though, for people is, like, on the back. Like, you know the, the parts that flip into the back? The, yes. Um, the, uh, whatever, the back of the seats or whatever, right? Was yes. that it? Um, those those parts, I think, have been breaking on people. Like, okay. and again, I think it's it's one of those things where I, I don't know if people are just grabbing it. Like, like you were talking before about like have you, have moving stuff past other stuff. Like I think if you don't get the sequence right and you like don't pull stuff out correctly and you're kind of ham fisting it a little bit, I think you can break it. I think it's just it, it's something to where like I don't I wouldn't expect it to break. It's just that like I think you have to be careful. Is kind of what yeah. If that makes it's, sense. It's possible. Yeah. So. Anna, you know, you said you felt that this transformation was just long. Um, and I think all the Masterpiece figures I've seen you get, other than Black Arachnia, you disliked. So I think, you know, to help people, you know, kind of like the purpose of a review is 
you know, here's our opinions here, but you have to have like a frame of reference. So what transformations do you enjoy is my question. What like, transformations do I enjoy? I actually, I mean, I, I mentioned it as my acquisition of the year, but those, um, the MMC cassettes, the, um, the Rumble and Frenzy, like that has probably been one of the most fun transformations that I've done in a long time. Um, because it actually doesn't take very long, but you literally make a small rectangle into a big, fully posable action figure in a way that is somehow intuitive and easy. <laughs> so I'm not really sure. So you do not like complex or long transformations of any sort? Is that Not really. Not really. Generally, no. I think that one is pretty complex, though. So, so I think that's Rob, probably like, my limit I feel to like complexity. In general, the, there, there is a hard line that started at MP36, and maybe, I guess you could maybe say Inferno. Like, I felt like Inferno was fun. Like, like kind of the little, that moment where you collapse everything into his back. Like, that was just amazing. That's a cool but moment. I guess yep. you could say that was maybe complex, but, like, I... To me, I feel like that Megatron, like, was really the one where, like, it started the, like, everything after that is pretty darn complex. Like, the I didn't think yeah. madness. I didn't yeah. think that um, the Sunstreaker was was bad. Like, it was definitely more complex than any of the other cards. But like, yeah, it's, by far. Like, yeah, but like, it was still pretty complex. And then like the. The newer ones that we have now, um, like I, I feel like some of those just it almost seems like needlessly complex, and maybe not. Maybe I'm just crazy. Yes. Like, um, I don't think it's that, ne- that made me realize what I don't like about masterpieces. I've never articulated it in that way, but yeah, it's needlessly complex. I disagree. Of course you I do. You disagree. That's why we're on the show together. <laughs> yeah. We knew I, you would disagree. I know there's some That's people fine. that they love those you know, really involved transformations. Like, I mean, I know there's people back in the day, like, like bad cube is one that was like just Ugh. known for just crazy. <sighs> like the thing explodes and it's like, you know, whatever. I think that masterpiece is definitely more intuitive. Like I 100% agree with you. Like, I mean like uh, MP36, for example, like I can get through that transformation on Megatron. Like, that one's without, tough. With, I can get through it without instructions other than like a couple points. Like there's a couple points where I'm like, okay, what, what do I flip wherever? But it's, it's complex. Like, um, so and, and the, I, I, the, the word you use that I wanted to make a comment about was needlessly. And what the masterpiece line is trying to achieve is that hyper tune aesthetic that transforms into something that's also tune aesthetic. And because the animation cheated so much, it's not needless. It literally a has a need, and it's that the animation cared nothing about the toys, <laughs> you know. So right. that's the only point I'd make. Now, the, to your point, it can be things that people find intuitive and fun, or it can be nightmares. And I think there's some universal agreement, like bad cubes are nightmares. You know, no one likes fans' toys blur. <laughs> no one likes that transformation. You know. You, you know? I- I actually, most of the bad cube ones, I actually didn't have that big a problem with. Like, some of the X Transbots ones, I. The early X Transbots, yeah. Like, the, yeah, like some of those. Uh, Wind Charger is just nightmare fuel. Um, so. Like, getting that wrist around is like the worst thing. The rest of it's not too bad, but getting. Yeah. <laughs> the wrist, the feet are horrible. The wrist is horrible. The feet are horrible. And then, and then yeah. the last part where you peg the chest in. Like, does not work getting that lined up is horrible too but anyway does not like work. not not talking about that but like just to write us back to hound yeah i, I, was, I, like I was to trying that. to make my point but no no ahead. your point was made that's good so, so I, what what i was gonna say though is is that like there's certain figures that we've had where they've done some really cool things to to make like really interesting transformations that are still are are somewhat simple and intuitive and like you're like i can't believe they they did that so like i always feel like some of the transformation process in some of the make toys figures is that way and so like the one that i really want to compare it to is gun dog and i know like don uh from the show has kind of mentioned like that he uh that that he doesn't want mp hound because he has gun dog and all that right and i will say so i've you know i've had gun dog like a couple times before 
And I, I love that figure. Like it is just, and, and honestly, I would say that for a lot of people, like that is, might be the better figure because you don't have to worry about like, I never had paint like that thing is painted. I never had paint issues with it. It has a ton of die cast in it. Like it's just a really fun, it's a fun transformation. It's a pretty intuitive transformation other than the make toys tabs. Like where there's a, you know, part where you have to kind of tab everything together. But, um, I, I really enjoyed that figure a lot and I feel like I enjoyed it more than hound. Like I didn't, I didn't hate hound. Like when I was transforming it, it was just some pieces where it was annoying to get those stupid wheels out of the leg cavities. And I didn't um, hate it either. I honestly think it's creative and interesting and well done. I just, I don't think I want to spend that much time transforming an Ashen figure, like a single one. I think I'd rather do several in a shorter period of time than I would just this one. Now, the thing is, though, I honestly do. I want this, like this action figure of Hound. Hound was a neat-looking robot man, and this is a accurate, screen-accurate version of him. You know, cartoon-accurate. He looks just like he did in the cartoon. He's posable. He's expressive. He's really super neat in this form. I think this has led me to have the revelation that I would almost rather have a new line of multiple Revel Tech type figures that look like this. Because the old Revel Tech figures actually do not fit my aesthetic at all. I don't like how they look. But that style of just action figure that is him and then own like Siege Hound. Because that toy is fun and easy to transform. You know, if I want to have a hound transformer, there it is. And then this could be my cool action figure of the guy. I could go for that. Now then again, that's because I'm not going to try to display. I'm not going to make a display of real life accurate cars and trucks. Like that's not something I want in my house. Weird spaceships and tanks and stuff, sure. But real life accurate cars and trucks... They're just going to be, you know, I'm going to put them in that mode, play with it for a little bit, and then put them back in robot for display. Animals, too, like dinosaurs and cats and stuff. Those are fun. So you you would be more, yeah, like if Flame Toys did everything, you that would interest you. <laughs> I'm very interested in the, um, the painted model kits they're going to start doing. They're going to start doing the pre-painted model kits, and they're starting with Prime, and I think it's $80 for it. I think a painted version of that model kit, I have it right beside me, might be worth $80 and might solve the masterpiece issue for me. Because the masterpiece issue for me is just like, I am a little frustrated because I did actually buy one, two, five masterpiece figures this year. Is that right? Four or five, something like that. I think it's just four. I don't know what all you bought, so... Hound and Bumblebee and Black Arachnia and Megatron. Because Beast it. Megatron. If you want to get technical. What did I get? Did you get Dinobot. Dinobot? Oh, I did. I got Infinite Transformation Dinobot, which had problems. Um, but I don't think that was the fault of the actual design. Um, so, anyway. Like, out of four Masterpiece figures, I am happy with two of them and I really love one of them and you know I'm happy with Hound actually and I'm happy with Black Arachnia and I like Black Arachnia I'm embarrassed to like this honestly <laughs> as a fan of the brand I, I'm embarrassed that I am okay with all this nonsense just because I love this cute little chubby face that I watched as a kid. Like, I wanted a Bumblebee with that goofy expression and that goofy expressiveness, and I got them. But that's the only reason I say I even like them. This... Same. This is neat. You know, he's clean. He only has a little bit of kibble from the back. His arms, even though they are accurately recessed, still work and function and are neat. I was worried that having this piece here to conflict with was going to make him not expressive and it doesn't his face is good he comes with one of the new silly faces i like the silly expressions they give them these days 
And he's just really impressive. I just don't want, I actually don't want to transform him. Like, if I transform him, it'll just be to prove to Rob that I can do it. See, I just wonder if, if, like, with with these new Masterpiece figures, if instead (coughs) of, you know, collecting them and a bunch of other stuff, if I only collected Masterpiece, and, like, that's all I did. And so I was getting, like, a figure once every two or three months or whatever, right? And it was an event. Every time I got one, and it didn't matter because that it was so expensive because I'm only getting a figure every three months. And so then I get this, and I'm able to spend, you know, two months, like, flipping this thing back and forth. I think it would be different than to where, you know, some of us, you know, myself included, where you get a giant box from Big Bad Toy Store or wherever, Chosen Prime or something like that. And you have, like, five other figures in there. And you're like, damn, I have to get through Hound. Because you know I, what? I want to check out this, this, and this, and this, or whatever. You know, because I just got x bots, you know, Motormaster, too, and whatever. I think that's a really good point, Lucas. Because about when I started hanging out with you guys and um, – collecting more than I used to so you know my collection grew in the last year way more than it ever has in a year and I'm wanting to lessen that in the next year um but the point I'm making is that right before that was when I got Masterpiece Sunstreaker and Masterpiece Sunstreaker was something that I enjoyed so much like it had been hound or about the same level of complexity to be honest Um, but when I got that thing, you know, I went through the suffering of ever how long it was to transform him. When I got him to robot mode, it was such a cool reward because I could put a goofy face on him and make him do all sorts of goofy poses. I had him beat up side swipe. Maybe I had them make out a little, you know, all my weird (laughs) things I do with my action figures. And it was awesome. Like I post him with all my different figures. I took I took pictures and sent them to my one robot friend at the time because I didn't have lots of robot friends back then. And it was a good time. And now I guess like I've gotten a little grumpier because this, that was like probably one of the only masterpiece figures I got that year. And probably one of the only figures I got that month. (laughs) I mean, you know, something you've talked about there as, I've been buying less Transformers, and, you know, like me and Lucas have went opposite directions. You know, I went all in. We both used to collect all the things, and then Luke's like, fuck that, I'm just going to go Chug. And I was like, fuck Chug, I'm just going to go Masterpiece. Um, but I've started branching out into other action figure lines, and the action figure element of the Masterpiece line and the third-party Masterpiece line for that these days, because, again, Takara sets the bar, and everyone else has to keep raising to meet it. Um is insane that they do this in a transforming figure. I mean, I have, you know, like this uh, Scorpion figure that came out from Storm Collectibles was, I think, I bargain hunted and found it for a little under $60. And Hound has as much articulation. You know, this Sector figure that I got in a couple days ago, I bargain hunted and found it for 83 I think it's like 90 or 95 at Big Bad. You know, and... Well, that's because it comes with this big ass accessory, but um, it's like you know that's on figures that don't transform, where they're reusing parts and engineering constantly. Whereas masterpiece figures tend to be all unique engineering every time, you know. So it's and the amount of articulation they get in there with that with engineering is just it's kind of ridiculous. Well, you know. I would say in general with, with Transformers, it's a lot more satisfying posing them compared to other action figures like, you know, Marvel Legends or like Figwarts or whatever it may be because they're humans. So they have inevitably smaller feet. And so a lot of times it's hard to get them to actually balance well, like whereas like it, it's almost yeah. hard to have a Transformer fall over just because like it usually has pretty big feet. Yeah. I'm great at getting mine to fall over, but I also like to pose them dramatically. I I think that, you know, in this last year, I bought way too many of this kind of stuff. And I have to say, like, my experience with, and I pointed to my siege hound when I said that, um, 
I think my experience with these and like, you know, Lucas, let me check out. Should I, should I reveal on air that you bought the Cyberverse figures, Lucas, or do you want to hide that? Oops, too late. Um, so Lucas let me mess with his Cyberverse figures or technically his son's Cyberverse figures. And, um, I had fun playing with them. You know, I transformed the Megatron and the Bumblebee. They were both fun to mess with. They were cool. And I was ready to give them back. Like, I don't want either of those two things on my shelf. I thought they were fun to play with, but, like, yeah. I have no interest in displaying them. And, you know, I have a friend who actually, like, he displays a few things, but mostly he just has toy boxes. And he'll just get out the figures and mess with them and, like, play with them and then put them back in the boxes. Because he doesn't actually, like, want to display them at all. He just wants to play with them. And I think that's honestly what these figures are serving for me. It's just, like, I play with them, and then it's, like, give them back. So if I can just borrow Lucas's to play with for a minute, then he'll complain about me making it loose. Um, then that's probably enough for a lot of these. Because for my shelf and for my, like, posing fixation, I want this. I want to pose these types of things, these complicated masterpiece level action figures. Personally. Here's where I am on that. And I, I'm going to take you back off your idea from earlier. I like displaying my toys, like my toy figure, my siege figures, my studio series figures are out. I love it. But I would buy and display the just action figure versions of the animation accurate dudes. Because if it's going to look that good, and that hound does look really good, I don't really want to pay as much as it is for something I'm not going to enjoy transforming. So I'd rather it look as accurate as it possibly can be and give up transforming and be, you know, 60 bucks. It wouldn't be 60 bucks, though. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm I'm making stuff up, guys. I'm hoping on the skated model kit line. It wouldn't be $150. That's so I will, I will say, I you know, one, one thing about the new direction of Masterpiece with the paint and all that, and as much as I complain about the paint and transformation and shipping and all that, like, it looks so much better. Like, all the Masterpieces, especially in hand, look beautiful. Like, the amount of paint that they have on them and, and just that shiny paint, I mean, like, you know, between Optimus and Hound and Bumblebee and all that. And I think that, in general, like, if that's – the look you're going for like i i still think like the new the new animation accurate looks so much better on the shelf in my opinion than and i think it looks more premium like when you're like when you when you set it down and step away and look at it from you know from a couple feet away like it, it looks incredible and and so i think that they you know probably made the right move by going that way because it's probably you know it's it's more premium than, than what it was um so but i think for total package I, I still miss old masterpiece i think if old masterpiece had continued in the style that the pluses of the old masterpiece figures are now i would be in masterpiece right now i mean i got blue streak plus of the holiday and I still love the molding on that figure. It's amazing. It's the figure that made me get into Masterpiece. But the paint on it now, I'm looking at it. It's over over here. Uh, it's incredible. I mean, if they had done the animation level paint on that type of mold where it makes a compromise between a licensed vehicle mode and an animation robot mode, I think that's my sweet spot. But they didn't do that. So before... Because I know my, how long Microcast was run. I know we've been talking a lot really just about Masterpiece in general. I wanted to point out at least some features of Hound before we run out of time. Um, for people that are curious about what all it has. So something Anna can show off. Um, he has a visor gimmick in his head that is another, like, it's all the extra little things that, you know, really make this or help bring this package together as a Masterpiece. So and it's like integrated. It flips out and it flips his visor down, and that's really cool. Um, and we'll show it in a minute. It's also is. I guess once I can get it out. <laughs> um, I've never the seen back that panel. Before. The back panel of his stuff has a bunch of little painted details, which are neat. Yeah. Like you know, of like gears and stuff that you would see on a jeep. You know, a bunch of little things that are, that are nice. Um, I thought that was really cool. Yeah. The. His big shoulder launcher as well also folds up into the car as like, oh, 
almost all the weapons um, are integrated into both modes. So yeah, there he is with his oh, that's his scuba face. mask or scuba mask. Yeah, that's it. You're right. Um, like even his hologram gun that he comes with, it detaches in two parts, and each half goes into one leg. You know, kind of like how Sunstreaker had that extra gun or whatever hiding in his leg. Oh, Master B Sunstreaker, that is. Um, that so he has cool a on that figure. Yeah, so he has like just a bunch of neat little things, and it definitely has the masterpiece moment. Again, for me, it was when all the attached extra attachments folded up in his feet. And he has a big spike. It's the spike we've gotten. Yeah, it's the spike we've gotten beforehand, but he's larger now. And he still doesn't have any face painted for some so reason. So weird. Because like, homunculus. Yeah. I mean, they obviously can because, again, even on the small one, they paint the belt and the belt buckle. But they can't, you know, put some dots for eyes. Big oh. spike can hold little spike. Oh, but little spike doesn't have <laughs> legs anymore. <laughs> Tune into Out of My Wallet from a few weeks ago if you want to see that happen. <laughs> if you want to see me just split my Bumblebee spike in half. Great. It's gruesome. Well, I was trying to rotate his waist, and his waist decided that I went too far. And it stopped being a waist. It started being um, a gap. He became jazz. <laughs> Spoilers. I could pose this spike, ripping the little spike in half, and oh, I could try to jazz oh, up. No. That would be really creepy. Oh, get. No. That would be creepy. I gotta do it. Hey, Peter, if you're still watching, can you tell us if the canopy is from a thing? <coughs> at some yeah, they point? did that in the comments. Oh, did they? So is it? Did he? When did he? Did I it? missed that. Rob, didn't you and Peter go through that? We were talking about when was Hound first announced, and it was yeah. July 2018. I was thinking it was 2019. I thought yeah, he was about I some episode about Atlantis. I don't, I don't think he did. Well, he'll tell us in a couple seconds if it is. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get this done in time. Um, <laughs> I'm, well, I may have to admit defeat. Like, I can't oh, remember yeah. how... Um, I'm just, I can't remember which way the arms are positioned inside the Jeep under the canopy. It's like, if I could figure that out, the rest of it would come together pretty good, you know. But yeah. just like it sucked getting into robot mode, forcing the arms past the little wheel wells, it sucks going back in, too. That part sucks. The rest has uh, gone fine. I just wasn't sure. I can't remember which way these arms go. Yeah, like, that's right. Thank you, James. I have to make that picture now. I'm the only one who can. Guess I'm the only one who destroyed her small spike. <laughs> so frightening. But yeah, don't, no, I mean, don't I, do it because it's literally broken. I think overall, like I like Hound, or I'm sorry, I like Gun Dog better than Hound. But I've never messed with Gun Dog or Willis for that matter. Uh, I've seen transformation of Willis and looked bad. Yeah, I, I never. I'm not a big fan of this person, so. Um, but uh, I, I would say that I would still recommend this figure uh, for most people. Like, I still think he's the best looking hound, um, you know, overall. Um, the, the transformation I do, like, again, like Anna said, it was just, it was complex. It wasn't, it wasn't horrible. It was just, it was complex. Um, so, I mean, I would still, it would still give a thumb, thumbs up for me. Um, you know, I definitely, like, Bumblebee's probably one of the, Honestly, Bumblebee might be the only masterpiece I don't really like, but um, yeah, like I still, I still I like this one. I would recommend him. I mean, he looks good. Like other than that, but I, I think yeah. I'd recommend him. He's not for me, but he seems good. He looks good. If you like long, involved transformations, go for it. He looks I excellent. I mean, I can't get over how amazing he looks. He looks great. They nailed it. I think he is, because before this, Sunstreaker was the masterpiece figure I thought looked best, and I think Hound is tied to him now. I think they both look equally good. Hound's backpack, I think, edges him out, because he doesn't really have one, and Sunstreaker's, that's the only part I didn't like on Sunstreaker, is when you get him into robot mode, you have to like peg it in together to get it to kind of wrap up, and it that's feels true. really tight, like you're putting pressure on things you don't want to put pressure on, and... 
like it cleans up pretty nicely in the, at the end of the day, but it always makes me a little uncomfortable. Um, People complain about that backpack. That's true. Yeah, I the would hound, say that hound is slick, but they're both great. I would say that you know the reality of this figure is that right now I think at most retailers he's about one hundred and sixty dollars, um, which is a lot of money. And I mean, I bought him Amazon Japan, so I got him significantly cheaper because I pre-ordered the moment I could. Um, however, you know that may not be most people's reality. Most people's reality might be one hundred sixty dollars and four bucks shipping or whatever, depending on where they go. Um, and if it is, then you know you need to really know what you like. If you have Sunstreaker and you were happy with the transformation, the way he looked, and everything about him, you will adore this figure. You should get it. If you previously owned some of the more complicated masterpieces and sold them because they made you mad, then you probably don't buy this one. Um, if you are looking for, you know, more simple, if you're looking for something that you're going to transform for funsies, you probably don't want this because A, it's a long transformation and B, with a figure like this, you know, there's going to be some paint where every time you transform it and you probably don't actually want to transform the same for funsies. But if you're the kind of person who can be in all of a great transformation and then afterwards super happy to have a premium action figure to put in fancy poses and do whatever you like with, that's, you know, I can probably pose this in Anna poses for years to come and it won't wear out. You know, it'll be fine. It's a good quality figure. If I never transform him, he won't get damaged. Um, <laughs> so if that's what you want in a figure, I think go for it. I think that he is perfect for all of that. If you are wanting something to play with, I would not really recommend it. Um, so I do want to mention that Peter did answer our question earlier. Yep. Uh, it was in the middle. I said he did. So. Yeah, so it was it was in the uh, uh, Atlantis Arise episode from G1. Was, oh, um, yeah, that was the part of the show where the two of you were going on diatribes, and yes, I yeah. ended up raising my hand in order to speak. I remember. That's why I noticed, and you guys did it. So, yeah, so okay, so thank you, Peter. I appreciate that. See, Peter's the man. I told you he's better than I am. <laughs> no. I think Peter brought up a, a fantastic point that we should all, you know, like talk about fans project, uh, motor master. If we ever want to talk about abuse. From the door. Ugh, <laughs> never again. I sold that thing in combined mode just to not have to do it again. I was just like, you take this whole combiner. So oh, bad. Man. You know, so what's funny is, is I actually really like that thing or that combiner because I've only gotten him in combined mode and I've, never transformed the motor master every time i think about it i like watch a video and i'm like no no I'm not maybe i sold it to you before we know yeah there are transformations that are way worse it was on ebay uh mm-hmm. was it missing a couple parts no well then yeah. i don't think it was me then was it super oh, cheap connections 300 bucks no, no, it's definitely not me then. No, I buy, I bought that thing for like a hundred bucks for the. Computer. You can't get three hundred out of it these days. Yeah. It was a very you probably can't get two hundred anyway. That's that's not the show. <laughs> so anyway, but uh, but yeah, Rob obviously loves it, so I guess it's a recommend from from all of us. Well, uh, I mean, it's uh, I, uh, you you know what you're into. If you want right. awesome looking, cartoon accurate masterpiece level toy, you've already got it bought. You know, let's be honest. Right. Like, right. I don't think anybody's waffling on the MP line anymore. I mean, you either know you're into it or you're not. Right. Yeah. You might yeah, be trying to pick like, one up used for cheap, you know, or I think cheaper. The wafflers are going to be the people who have gone dog or Willis and don't know if they yeah. should upgrade. I, I mean, if if you again, if you want should. that car- if you want that cartoon accurate look, it's going to blow both out of the water. If you like that kind of mix of toy realistic ish look and cartoon look then you're probably going to want to stay with willis or maybe gun dog again I, I haven't messed with either but i know I you know like, willis. Um, i feel like willis is i mean it's pretty decently cartoon accurate like it's not bad i mean no no it's not far off but it's like, like shiny like, and stuff yeah 
I, and, and again, I think that the one thing with this is, is like, this isn't the same as like when Sunstreaker came out over Sun Surge for, for Bad Cube. Like it was yeah. like night and day, not even close, like, you know, upgrade uh, between the two. Whereas like, I think this is a little bit closer. Like if you had, if you did have Willis, um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I still think it's probably better than, than all of them. Yeah, if you were if you didn't like Prime 3.0 and you didn't like Bumblebee, but you did like Sunstreaker and Megatron and the stuff that came before, then I think this is the one to get you back into it. I think that's it, it definitely feels like Sunstreaker again, like a direct Sunstreaker. Yeah, I don't know what it is, it's just I think it's the paint, like the final paint finish and everything and I think they just nailed it. They're going to be BFFs in my display forever. They totally should be. Oh, you know something that I, I do want to highlight just before we end, just for people who are as scatterbrained as I am. If you have forgotten the Hound isn't very big, you will be surprised by the fact that he's the size of the cars. Because <laughs> I had forgotten the size of Hound because I think I forgot how small Jeeps were. <laughs> do you do you actually have a car to, tr- to show off with? Oh uh, yeah, I do. Display? I was gonna say. Yeah, let me. When you guys I have to stand for up. Size comparison. Whoops. Like we'll see how many of myself I. Um. We'll go with these two. These are right here. I mean, robot Ugh. mode height. He's definitely the same. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was. Like four jerseys. So here is MP Hot Rod. It's the Acom. Which Hot Rod was a little bit taller than the other cars, so... Yes. Hot Rod is bigger. And then, um... I have Sphinx here, who is going to come in at about the same height. There you go. And you have Sphinx scales with everyone else, so... Are you going to... You're going to trade out Sphinx for Transform Elements Mirage? I'm not sure. I'm going to have to see how that one looks, because at first glance, I liked it better. I definitely like the look of it better, but we'll wait and see how the engineering turns out. Yes, we're going to have to wait on that, because it could be a way worse figure. Yep. Because I know that the Transform element doesn't have a big portfolio yet, right? They just did that Prime, and then they're doing the Legends Legends Black uh, Beast War stuff, but that's not out yet. I think the Prime's the only thing that's come out, but someone could click. I feel like some people have the Legends Black Ragnia, but I don't think she's actually out. Maybe some test samples got out. I cut down on Legends a lot recently, so I've just been getting the stuff that looks most cool to me. Well, do we have anything else to say? Someone said they're late to the party. I'm assuming it's Paul. Yeah, I was going to say, is that Paul? Yeah, we always have to, like, switch who we're interacting as. Or just, <laughs> like, we're just talking to ourselves. <laughs> I always hey. get my first message out, and I'm like, oh, shit. And I go in and change it. I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, and my computer melts when I'm watching this on Facebook and also running Skype. So, like, when I try to switch it, it's, like, half an hour later. <laughs> it switches. Oh, no. It's like, woo, how you post this? And I'm great. All right. Well, so uh, Hound, we like it. Yay, Hound yeah. says. Yeah. Uh, Hound says say. Everyone for uh, tuning in. So if you like what we do, uh, consider supporting us on Patreon, patreon.com slash TFLP. Uh, tiers from a dollar uh, up to 25. And we should have uh, Ouch My Wallet, I guess, tomorrow night. Is that right, Rob? What time is that at? Uh, probably about the same time as this one, 830 Central. I think. It's kind of nice having both shows at the same time. So, if I can find cast to join. So, I haven't done roll call I'll yet. I'll be on. I've I'll got, do it. I got some stuff. So. Cool. It can just be us. <laughs> See, and thanks for having me on the show tonight. It was yeah, fun. Yeah, thanks for joining us, Rob. So. I'm happy to come and tell you all about how great Masterpiece is anytime. <laughs> <laughs> this hound no, is good agree. because Thank he can hold half a spike. So. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, and we will see you next week.